What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of our Colorado Avalanche Franchise Mode series on NHL 22. If you haven't seen the last episode, that link is in the video description below. So in this episode, we are going to be getting into the 2029-2030 season, which means we are down to the last several seasons of this Franchise Mode series. Again, I decided we're going to do 12 seasons. Like I said, 15 felt a bit too long. 10 felt a bit too short, so 12 is that sweet spot in the middle. So after this season, we only have three more episodes, which means we have, including the season, four seasons total to hopefully add at least one more Stanley Cup to our resume with the Colorado Avalanche. We've won three cups in our first five seasons in this series, and I guess the game decided that we were just too good because we haven't won a Stanley Cup since. So we're in a bit of a drought here, but the good news is that we are at least making the playoffs every single season. Last year, we had a super solid year. I'm confident in the team that we have this season. And as always, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. The support helps me out a ton. So let's jump right into the 2029 2030 season. Enjoy. All right, guys, so to get this episode started, obviously, I want to show you our lines for this season. Now, as you can see here, our first line is absolutely nasty, uh, plus two correlation, second line very solid, third line also gets that plus two correlation, and then our fourth line has even correlation. Now, I tried switching some things around here. I tried putting Chinikov on the top line which gives our top nine forwards all plus twos. However, I felt that our second line is good enough and I think it's more worth it to have a 95, a 91, and a 90 all playing on that first line because our second line is still very good. Um, and then our third line gets the plus two. So it'd be like an 84, an 84, and an 88. So I think our third line can tear it up. I think it's more worth it to keep the lines as they are now. And then looking at our defensemen, again, I moved Kale McCarr down to a second pairing because here I do believe that the plus three on our top four is very worth it. Um, again, our top line would basically be playing like two 91s. Our second pairing would be playing like a 90 and a 95. So they can absolutely take advantage of, you know, second and third line um, third lines of other teams. Then our bottom pairing here, very good depth, an 82 and an 80 on your third pairing is not bad at all. Uh, take a quick look at our goalies, Mike DiPietro and Ian Blomquist. Uh, DiPietro's up to an 84. He's 30 years old, so he can actually still go up in overall for, you know, probably another several seasons before he starts dropping a little bit. So that's very good for us to see him go up. Looking at our special teams here, Again, all first units have that plus five correlation, so they're going to be absolutely popping off. Uh, second lines are even correlations, which is still fine. You know, I'd rather have that than negative correlations. Um, and again, here, four man power play plus five. Penalty kill units, very, very good. Expect our PK to have a high kill percentage here. Then our three man PK, even correlations here. So, guys, those are our teams going in, those are our lines, I'm sorry going into the 2029-30 season. I'm pretty confident in this group, honestly. I mean, we got depth all over the place. Hartman was a great ad for us. Um, you can look and see how he's been playing. Very solid player still. You know, been bouncing around to teams. Uh, really good season there with Toronto, but you know, very good depth scoring there over the last several seasons. So I think he's gonna bring some, you know, good veteran experience to our third line there. Um, Kempe 33 and then Hickman's our rookie at 22 years old so I think he'll benefit a lot from playing with those two guys and we are just going to take a quick look at our contracts because we have some very interesting situations coming up so I want to show you guys our contract situation for this season. So guys, let's take a look at our contracts. We have Ratu and Kempe becoming free agents this season. Now Ratu we're giving three and a half million he now wants 10.1 million. That is so much money. And for someone who dropped to actually top six potential, he's 26, 87 overall, he can still grow. But personally, I think that's way too much money to be paying someone like him. So we may end up trading him this year. He's a very good player. So if he does well, that'll boost his trade value. I think we could get, you know, like maybe even like a first round draft pick for him and some, you know, a good prospect of ours, or at the very least a second round draft pick. So he could have some very good trade value for us um, and would allow us to bring in, 
you know, another center that's not asking $10 million. And then Kempa here also asking over $6 million, which again is a lot of money for someone at his age. He's 33, 86 overall, so he's still a very good player, very good depth forward for us. Um, he's been playing lights out. Again, we only have four seasons left, so we could sign him to that extension. But, you know, throughout the year, the prices may change, right? They might come down in the salary that they want. But regardless, Ratu and Kempe are guys that I have to be prepared to let go of at the end of the season, either trading them or just letting them go to free agency and finding someone else who's maybe a little younger or at least comparable who's asking for less money. And then you see our winger situation is quite nice, actually. Um, you know, Fajimo, he's been playing well, so he might, you know, be good trade value for us as well. He's someone I'm been keeping an eye on to trade. Um, although if he's just playing lights out and he's growing, you know, he still has several more seasons to grow. We might not have to. So our, our left wingers are looking good. Our right wingers, we have Chinikov coming here and he's asking for about 5 million again for four seasons. We could probably swing that and he does have more room to grow. He's only 28 and an 84 overall, so he's a very good player. We'll probably let go of Hartman, um, although he does have a low salary. He's, he's a good player. So Chinikov is someone I'm probably planning to re-sign. Uh, depends on his growth, depends on how he does for us. And then our defense is locked up aside from Byram. Now Byram wants that contract extension. He was asking for about 10 million. For someone of his caliber, He's well worth that contract, I believe. So we did offer him a contract. We'll see what he says. If he declines it, then I have to be prepared to potentially lose him in the free agency this year. So we still have a lot of good defensemen. Obviously, Spence is going to grow some more for us. He's 28. Root 2 is still growing. Vasilev's still growing. You know, Kale McCarr still, you know, we have him locked into the end of the franchise series here. So I'm not too worried if we lose Byram in the free agency because I'm very confident that we can find a defenseman to lock in for the next four seasons who's asking less than $10 million. And then you take a look at our goalies who so have Blomquist for the next couple seasons. Di Pietro is becoming a free agent. He's asking for $5.8 million. That's a lot of money. Again, for four seasons, he doesn't come down at all. He doesn't go up. So we could potentially swing this and lock him in if he's developing quite nicely for us. However, there are some other good goalies that are becoming free agents. So this is definitely a guy that I'm going to want to monitor his asking price throughout the season. And I am prepared to make other offers if someone just as good, maybe a little younger, maybe a little better, comes up in free agency and is asking for less money. So these are some interesting contract situations that we have here, guys. I thought it was worth it to show you because heading into these final four seasons, our goal obviously is to win at least one more Stanley Cup, so I don't mind going all out and signing a crazy good free agent like say Jack Hughes or Alexander Barkov if we have it within our cap space to do so. I'm fully prepared to sign whoever I think is going to give us the best chance to win a cup. So showing these contract situations was very important and we are going to get right into the simulation here now. No is a long-winded intro, but, you know, pretty good situations, you know, interesting situations, I should say, that we have going on this season. And we're going to obviously, as usual, simulate right up to the new year, January 1st, 2030, and see how we do then. Okay, guys, wow. So Byram did renew the contract with us. We actually offered him to like 200k less than what he was asking. So I always find that, you know, when they say we offer them the type of money they feel they're worth, um, that's just funny to me because they're offering, they're literally offering them less than what they want. But then again, we did, um, you know, we did lessen the amount of years. They're asking for like six years. We bumped it down to four or five, I believe. Um, so this was huge for us. We don't have to worry about finding a defenseman. Um, absolutely a monster signing for us here. I'm very happy that we lock him in for the remainder of the franchise. Okay, so headed into the new year in January 1st, 2030. We have a record of 25-9-1, good for first in the Central Division, uh, and also first in the Western Conference so far. Playing very well. Um, one point behind the Hurricanes, who are first in the league. So yeah, we have a very solid record here. Um, feeling good about how we're playing, headed into the trade deadline. And I will certainly probably look to make a trade 
at the deadline. Um, so we're going to sim up to then and see how we are headed into the trade deadline in March. Okay guys, we just got a very tempting trade offer from Montreal here. They want to give us their round two and round three this season in exchange for our round five next year and Braxton Connolly. Now he does have a medium elite potential. Ruby is 18 years old and only a 52 overall. His numbers are pretty decent and obviously that could go up. However, round two pick. We do not have a round two pick this season, guys. Uh, and as you can see, Montreal, 26, 24, and 3, they're not doing too hot. So that round two pick could be a very decent pick for us. And they also want to give us a round three from Vegas. I honestly think we say yes to this. Um, you know, our Bobrovsky, Bobrovsky is looking like a very good prospect for us. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to accept this guys. I really like this trade. We get a round two this year. Um, I like this trade a lot. We're going to take this. All right. So hitting the trade deadline, we have a record of 42, 18 and two good for first in the central and still first in the Western conference. Uh, actually, you know, decent ways up. Um, and then the Hurricanes are first in the league. We are second currently. So we're playing very well. McKinnon just over point per game pace there. Uh, I'm Again, I'm very confident in this group this year. Um, we're playing quite well. We're going to handle the trade deadline here. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly I want to do, but I may be looking to trade Raw 2 and Kempe um, and potentially, you know, other players as well. Probably Fajimo. Um, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we just have a trade offer from the Detroit Red Wings. They want to give us their round two this year in exchange for our round two, along with their round three next year in exchange for our round two next year, and one of our AHL defensemen. Obviously, 30 years old, 79 overall. Uh, I don't really know what they're doing with this trade, <laughs> um, but I'm going to say yes because their round two pick in this year's draft probably going to be a good one. As you can see, they're 24, 36, and 3. I mean, unless a miracle happens, they're not making the playoffs. Um, so they're going to have some good draft picks. Um, and probably into 2031, too, honestly. Um, this year's draft class, like I said, looks really stacked. Um, we can load up on these second round draft picks. I believe we have two now. Um, I'm not, I honestly don't hold me to that. This might be our second round two pick. Um, I don't mind giving up hours. You know, again, we're probably going to make a decent playoff run, so our second round pick is going to be later. And I, this is an easy yes for me, guys. I'm going to say yes here. As you can see here, closing in on nine minutes left. I'm going to make this trade for the Sharks to give us a round six and round seven this year in exchange for Clemy. He's not doing too hot. The Sharks should have some decently, uh, you know, placed picks. So we're just going to make this trade here and get those extra picks this season. Okay, so the trade deadline is over. Obviously, we made the last... A uh, trade there, squeezed it in. Um, see any interesting trades here? Dylan Strom going to LA, Reichel going to Buffalo. Um, let's see here. Uh, DNCC and Grandly going to LA, Edmonton going to Arizona. That's a fairly big trade. Bo Horvat going to Edmonton in exchange for Galvin and Typolis. Uh, Ethan Bear to Florida. Uh, Mad Sogard going to Toronto. Uh, here's a big trade as well. Winnipeg getting Bouchard, Mantha, and Husso from Washington. And they give them a second round and a prospect. Uh, Jack Rosovic going to Seattle. And then Phillips going to Florida. Wow, they give up a lot for Phillips. He must be pretty decent. A uh, decent prospect, maybe. Um, but not too much of an active trade. Um, I couldn't really find trades that were worth it for Kempe or Ratu right now. So I decided to hold off on them. Plus, they were playing pretty well for us this season so far. And, you know, we got we got some good uh, draft picks in here. You know, we got a couple second round picks, which is great. So, you know, I'm really happy we were able to pick up those extra draft picks. And there's, yeah, there's a big trade. Horvat going to Edmonton. Uh, Nathan Bastion on waivers. Do we want to take him? How old is he? 32, 78. Uh, puts him through four, line three. Could be better. We're all right. Okay, guys. So 
42-18-2 coming out of the trade deadline. Obviously, we're going to be simming out to the rest of the regular season. We're playing very well. We're definitely making the playoffs this season. Um, and let's get to the playoffs, guys. Right, so any, and the end of the regular season is here, and we have a record of 52-27-3. Good for 107 points. First in the Western Conference, uh, the Hurricanes. Very impressive, 117 points. They will be taking home the President's Trophy. Uh, we finished first in the, or third in the league. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> the Coyotes making the playoffs. That's pretty funny to see. Um, but yeah, we got really solid stuff from our, um, you know, from our players here. We'll take a look at the stats in a minute. We'll see the Metropolitan Division there. Hurricanes, Penguins, Islanders, and Rangers are in the playoffs. Atlantic Division, Lightning, Senators, Canadians, and Sabres. Then for the Central, Avalanche, Jets, Predators, Coyotes, and in the Pacific, the Kraken, Oilers, Canucks, and Kings. So we're just going to go ahead and look at our stats here. Another 50-plus win season for us. We love to see it. McKinnon over point per game. New hook down on that second line, just at point per game. Uh, Ratu playing well. He, he wants that extension. Uh, he's showing he's showing out. Same with Kempe. Kairu had a bit of a down year, honestly. Uh, expect a little more from him, but still pretty good. Chinakov playing very, very well. Uh, up on that first line with Kairu and McKinnon. Uh, Hickman, my goodness, 40 goals. This dude is insane. 40 goals in literally under 15 minutes of ice time i mean look at his shot look at his physicality this kid is just crazy uh Fajimo scoring 23 for us ryan hartman providing some good depth scoring there uh and then here we have jacobs texier both getting 30 points thomas playing very well as our fourth line center and myrov dressing for a few games but still puts up seven points We'll look at our defenseman here. Makar leading the way, just one point over Vasilev. We like to see that. Makar still being our leading scorer despite being on the second pairing. He was with Rutu down there. They played well. Uh, Spence actually played quite well on that third pairing. Five goals, 29 assists. Very impressive. And look at these plus minuses up and down the lineup. Very, very nice to see that. Uh, take a look at our goalies. So DiPietro, not the best year in terms of save percentage, although goals against at 2.9, not bad. Uh, Blomquist started 21 games, played very well, 2.5.9 on one, 12-4 uh, and four record there, so nice to see them doing so well. I just want to take a look at the AHL team real quick, um, see how they did. So they did not make the playoffs, 43-33, that sucks. Oh my gosh. They got edged out by the heat. That's really unfortunate. Um, but let's just take a look at the rest of the league stats. See who might be in here um, for the awards. So points there. Ooh, Matthews and Teravine and tied there. Uh, Matthews should probably should probably probably win there. Uh, Sveshnikov and Teravine and absolutely popping off oh that is their top line oh my goodness no wonder they did so well uh, as for goals yeah matthew is gonna win them reese richard uh, mckinnon there 58 goals absolutely insane dude is still a tank absolute tank and then for our defenseman there makar there third on the list not bad at all see who's up here for the vesna or not the, i keep saying the vesna i mean the norris uh, I mean, Fox and Hughes there have the most points. Although Vasilev there with a plus 44. And only 9 penalty minutes. That's actually insane. Um, I honestly don't know. It could be Hughes again. He has a better plus minus than Fox. Um, but this is a pretty tight race. I love that, I love that we have two guys um, in the top there. And then we'll take a look at the goalies. Wins there of later. Wow, the Hurricanes are just stacked. Can they three-peat this year? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, so Vladar up there for a starter with Swayman, though. 0.919. And then goals against average for a starter, also Swayman. So 
He could win the Vesna. Um, Vasilevsky there though, putting up very solid numbers. Uh, so it's honestly Vesna's up for grabs this year. Swayman won it a couple seasons ago, I believe. Um, but looks like an interesting awards picture here. So we're going to get into the playoffs, guys, and see who we have in the first round. Right, guys, we have the Arizona Coyotes in the first round of the playoffs. They were 44, 35, and 3. I actually do want to go check out their lines, see who they have here. And wow, very stacked first line. Oh my goodness. They're all rookies, my gosh. Um, second line, very good as well. Um, third and fourth lines, pretty solid. Um, all right, so forwards, definitely going to be good matchups there with us. And then their defense, we're kind of all over the place with the pairings here. I think our defense overall outclasses them a little bit. This guy, though, Pierre Durand, 24 and 89, Jesus. Um, and we will take a look at their goalies. 85 Allenfeld, so he's good. He's very, very good. 82 poise. Check out his numbers this year. Yeah, pretty solid. 0.907298. So, um, you know, honestly, this is a pretty tough first round matchup. But we'll go sim into it and see how we do. All right, guys, we're going to sim this series game by game here. See the other playoff pictures here. First round, Seattle, LA again. Uh, Oilers, Canucks, Jets, and Predators. And then the Eastern Conference, uh, Lightning, Rangers, um, Senators, Canadians, Islanders, Penguins, and then the Hurricanes and Sabres. Um, so again, some pretty consistent teams making the playoffs here. And let's get this series with Arizona going. Shout off with a 3-2 win there. A 2-0 win. 4-2 loss, tough one. A 6-3 win. And there we go, we take care of the Arizona Coyotes in 5. I'm honestly pretty impressed with that. Um, they had a very good team. Uh, although I guess uh, guess it sort of bites you in the butt there when your top line is all rookies. Not, not a lot of playoff experience. Um, Tampa sweeps the Rangers. Hurricanes sweep the Sabres. And the other series are still going. So we will sim out and see who we get in the second round here. All right, as you can see, guys, the Canucks eliminate the Oilers and the Jets eliminate the Predators. And the other series are all going to Game 7s. And there we have it. The Kings eliminate the Kraken in 7. And we got two more series in the East to go. All right, so the Penguins ended up winning their series, and the Canadians won theirs, both going to seven games. We have the Winnipeg Jets in the second round here, so as usual, I want to go and check out their lines, um, see what kind of team they have going on this season. Zill of Connor, Shifley, and Ehlers, very solid first line, uh, you know, veterans at this point, so um, that's going to be very good for them. Second line, great, and then they kind of fall off a little bit on this third line, but, I mean, they got they got some good lines here, not going to lie. And their defense, all right, so their defense is a little bit weak. You know, we definitely outclass them on the defensive side. Um, we'll check out their goalies, 82 Huso and Rukin backing them up. We'll see how Huso played this season. Very respectable numbers. And in the playoffs here, four and two, he's putting up good numbers in the playoffs. So again, you know, every team that makes it here deserves to be here. So they got a very solid team. They were 49, 25, and eight in the regular season. And let's get this series going, guys. We will go game by game here. See what happens. 3-2 OT loss, that's very tough. A 6-4 win, big win for us there. Another OT loss. Oh my goodness, that that's just tough. A 4-1 win, tied 2-2 here. Let's sim, let's sim this game. Let's pick it up here. We're tied. Might as well see what's going on. Tied after one. Tied after two. And let's get into the third period here, guys. See what happens. 
about halfway through. And we are still tied 1-1. Whew. The shot number is climbing up there. Under five minutes. Down to the wire here under a minute to go. We're going to OT. All right, let's see what happens. Wouldn't so mad if they scored right off the bat. <laughs> uh, halfway through OT here. Wow. Both teams putting up a lot of shots. This game's insane. Oh, man. Two OTs, especially when you consider that the rest of the games have been pretty high scoring. So 46 to 40 shots. Double OT. Let's see what happens. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's brutal. All right. So we are in a 3-2 hole here, guys. Um... Oh, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, not another second round exit, please, no, please, 3-1, after 1, again after 2, and 5-2, we hold on, Newhook and Hartman coming up huge for us, and we are going to a game 7 here, my goodness. Alright, let's get into it, guys. We're going to sim into the Game 7 here. As you can see, the Canucks and Kings also go into Game 7. Both of the Eastern Conference series are over. Canes take care of the Penguins in 6, and the Lightning eliminate the Habs in 5. So Western Conference here, down to the wire. Game 7, let's get it going. Tied after 1, my goodness. Tied after 2, oh my god, man, let's... This is nerve-wracking, like, oh my gosh. Yikes. Yeah, 0-4-3. Plenty of time left. Down to the wire, though. Oh no, that's not good. That's looking like all she wrote here. Not gonna get it done here. Two minutes left, and we lose in game seven. Oh my gosh, man. The simulations here are just absolutely crushing us. Yeah, and uh, Kings get eliminated there. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, I don't know why the simulations are... I mean, I, I literally... The game said we were too good the first five years. And said we're not winning another cup here. Ah, uh, that's pretty brutal. All right, so we're going to sim forward here and see how these conference final series go. All right, guys, so the Stanley Cup final is between the Vancouver Canucks and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, Tampa could get it done, but I believe this is the first time Vancouver's made it to the Stanley Cup final during this franchise series. So I'm honestly kind of rooting for them. <laughs> um, you know, I'd love to see them take home a cup, especially because I believe Ajo is in his last year of his contract with them or maybe he has one more year it would still be nice to see them win the cup they are up one nothing up two nothing three nothing no shot they sweep the lightning oh three one there we go <laughs> and there you have it guys the stanley cup champions are the vancouver canucks you know, I'm honestly kind of kind of happy with that. That's um, quite uh, quite a good matchup they had. A good run. Let's see how it went down for them. Oh uh, yeah, Oilers in six, Kings in seven, Jets in seven, and then Lightning in six. Very respectable. And they, wow, Tampa had an extremely good run to the Cup final. Swept the Rangers, Habs in five, Canes in five, and then they fall to the Canucks. Um, you know, we had a very heartbreaking second round exit here in game seven. I just, oh man, the, uh, the simulations are just, uh, screwing us over. And if you guys want to check out our stats for the playoffs here, uh, as you can see, I mean, like top to bottom people were contributing, you know, um, our defensemen here. Yeah. I mean, you know, big performances all around, and then our goalies, I mean, look how good, look how well our goalies played. 
I mean, my goodness. Like, that's... I don't know how else to describe it other than just the simulation not going your way. Because they put up insane numbers. You know, there's no way we should have lost to the Jets. Um, but it is what it is. And we will start going toward the draft here. We have a good amount of picks. Picked up a couple second rounders in trades, so I'm very happy about that. And let's see what we can do in the draft. Alright guys, so just to see the retired players. Huge names again. O'Reilly, Johnny Gaudreau calling it quits. Um, Kadri there retiring. And yeah, there you have it. Landis Scott does retire, so i um, quite glad that we gave him that one year extension. Again, just it just felt super right to have him play his entire career with us. Uh, phenomenal career with the Avs. Good for him. There we go. Gallagher, Sagan, Shen. Uh, kind of falls off in huge names there. Trocek, Stevenson, uh, Deneau, Pearson. So, you know, some guys that were becoming free agents end up calling it quits. So that should make things more interesting. And then as far as defensemen go, there we go. Petrangelo, Riley, Klingberg, Lindholm, Lindell, Taves ends up calling it quits. Um, so some decently big names. Don't think any of these guys were going to be a free agent this year, so not much changes there. And as far as goalies go, Varlamov, Leonard, Korpisalo, Forsberg, and Lindgren um, among the biggest names. Uh, Varlamov calling it quits with Vegas there, 42 years old. Good for him. And then as usual, guys, we just want to take a look at the awards. Obviously, Vancouver Canucks, your Stanley Cup champions. Uh, we love to see it. love to see some variety there. Uh, Hurricanes, President's Trophy for the second year in a row. And then there are those. Individual awards, Matthews gets the R. Ross. Tara Vinen with the heart. Um, wow, okay. Uh, so Vasilev does win the Norris. Uh, that's a very cool to see. I figured that plus minus of plus 44 uh, was going to factor into that big time, considering he only had, what, six less points than the other guys. Uh, and it did, so that's very cool. That's the first time we've had one of our D guys win the Norris. Terravine and also gets the Lady Bing. Barada with the Calder. Aho with the Con Smythe. We love to see it. Uh, Swayman gets the Vesna. And wow, DiPietro gets the William Jennings. I good for him. And see guys, I don't know how we lose to the Jets in seven games when he played extremely well this season for us. My goodness. Uh, Myers with the Masterson, Nashville coach Jack Adams, O'Reilly with the Selkie, Tara Vining gets the Ted Lindsay, and Matthews, Marisha Shard. So the Carolina Hurricanes cleaned up these awards quite nicely, but you know, pretty proud that we got Vasilev there and then DiPietro on the Jennings. Very, very cool to see. And here we go, guys. We're going to get right into the NHL entry draft. Here we go. Top five picks. Philly, Dallas, Calgary, Detroit, and Boston. I'll take a look at the draft class here. See what we have. So some very good picks here. Wow. Uh, top five should all be medium elites. So be interesting to see what their overalls are and see 83 wow medium elite 80 medium elite very impressive calgary gets an 81 detroit gets an 80 <laughs> oh my goodness and boston gets an 80 wow that is an insane Top five picks. I mean, my goodness. That's crazy. So we're going to sim to our pick. We got the 28th pick here. And let's get it rolling. All right, guys. I'm going to select this Renee Dennis Pepin kid. 18 years old. Um, he's projected to go 31st. Uh, he's got a 75% chance at a low elite potential. Three years ETA to the NHL. And look at all these potential X factors he has. 50-50 on most of them, but 75% chance on quick draw. I like the looks of him, and let's see what he ends up being for us. And there we go, low elite, 64 overall. Very good first round pick for us. And let's get into our next pick, number 34. Nah, guys, here we go. We're going to take the medium elite. I don't know how I glossed over him. And 64 overall, medium top four. So did have a little bit better chances. Uh, than the other guy, but a very good pick for us. And we have another round two pick here, number 50. 
All right, guys, I'm going to select Dean Goddard. He has a guaranteed low top six potential ETA three years. Fits into our uh, scheme fit quite nicely and good skills. Um, we scouted him quite well. Uh, as you can see, sample size, very good numbers. Projected to go 57th. I am taking him over the medium elite defenseman because we already took a defenseman in the last pick. Um, so here we go. Let's take him. And 64 overall, very solid picks here in the second round. Then we have our next pick at number 78. Guys, I'm going to select this Landon Stapleton guy over the low elite. Um, I don't know why. Something's just telling me to take this guy. Uh, let's see what he ends up being. 63, low top 6. Very solid pick here in round three and let's go to our next pick number 119. I'm going to select this Wesley Vajiholahi guy. It's just a, I'm mostly going to select him just so I can absolutely butcher his last name every single time I say it. Um, but our scouts like him. Um, um, you know, decent skills, lowly potential 50-50, four years ETA. So probably not going to get to play with us by the end of this franchise mode, but you know, worth a shot. And low top 6D, not bad. 50 overall. Could have been worse. Uh, not salty about that. And we'll go to our next pick here. We're going to select Rodney Hogan here. He's got a 75% chance low bottom 6. Uh, 4 years ETA. Again, likely not going to be playing with us. But looks like a pretty decent pick, honestly. Didn't play all too much, but had pretty good competition there in Extra Liga. So let's see what he turns out to be. And low bottom 6, 59 overall. Pretty much on par with, uh, yeah, what a round 5 pick should be. Not bad at all. We'll go to our number 176 here. We're going to select Peyton Perry. He's got a 75% chance, medium top 9. Fits into the scheme nicely. Decent skills for where he's at in the draft here. Um, you know, good strengths. No weaknesses noted. Uh, seems like a solid pick here at 176. And yeah, 54 overall, medium bottom six. And we'll go to our number 188 pick. It's got the best potential. What's the worst that can happen? And <laughs> he is a low elite. Uh, only 49 overall. I mean, not too bad though. Um, that was actually a pretty solid pick for round six. And we'll go to our next one here. All right, we're going to select Vic Packer. 50-50, uh, low top nine potential. But we're in round seven here. Um, not going to get many, you know, diamond in the rough picks this way down. Um, but let's see what he ends up being for us. All right, low bottom six, 56 overall, not bad. And we still got one more pick here, I believe. All right, for our last pick, we're going to select Dakota Lavin. Uh, he's got a medium top six, 50-50 chance on that. Um, I mean, pretty decent stats for being, you know, at 220 overall. Um, pretty decent numbers as well. Let's see what he ends up being here. A medium 70, so that kind of sucks. He's at a 58 overall. Look at that Kaminsky, low elite. Cool pick there. Um, but yeah, round 7. Can't be salty at that. Overall, we had a very solid draft. You know, our first, I'd say, first half of these picks or so were very, very good. And here we go, guys. We're going to get into the resign phase. Um, this is going to be like where the insanity begins, kind of. Um, we got a lot of expiring contracts. So let's see what we can do. Alright guys, so Ratu is asking for $10.1 million. Um, does he come down at all? I mean, he does, but not much. That would make a difference for us. I feel like we're going to have to let him go to uh, free agency and risk it for the biscuit here. Um, campaign's up to 7.2. Oh my god. Lord goes down to 6.9 for one year again. That's not helping us much. Wants five million. My goodness, dude. What? What? Why? Are, why are these guys acting like this? So Chinakov actually went up to an 86. Kyra's down to an 86. That's unfortunate. Um, but Chinakov there. Oof. 6.2 million. We're only in for four. We could sign him for one year. Um, Hartman does not 
want an extension, so we can definitely let him go to free agency. Uh, defensemen, our main guys, pretty much locked and loaded. Uh, we still have Casey Roy's 25 and an 81, so how much does he want? 5 million, my god, dude. That, that's, oh, that's crazy there. Uh, let's see, how much does uh, Di Pietro went down to an 83? Unfortunate. He still wants 4.3 for one. Goes up, my god, dude. Alright. I think I'm going to let all these guys go to the free agency, to be quite honest. Um, we have 13.12 million in cap space so far. Um, we got Newhook and McKinnon locked in still. Um... I mean, Thomas could play on a fourth line, so we'd basically need a third line center. Um, don't know that anyone here is good enough to come up. Yeah, he's 23 and 73. Um, what was he making? 900k. How much is he asking for? 1.25. My god, dude. Stop being greedy. I feel like we can end up letting him go if he doesn't sign. Yeah, we got some stuff to figure out here, guys. <laughs> Noah Gundler interests me here. He's 28, 80 overall. Um, didn't play that much. Still put up 9 goals and 11 assists. Um, he has a very good shot. You know, decent skater and pretty good hands. Um, would fit in a 4 line 1, but, you know, probably stick him on the second line. Um, see how he meshes. So we're going to offer him a contract. He's only asking 1.15. I'm going to ask him for maybe two years and see if he'll do 1.05 and see what happens there. Alright guys, so I low-key am going to risk it for the biscuit here and give Alexander Barkov a contract. He's asking for two years. Um, he's 34 years old. I don't think he'd play until he's 38. Um, he does come down a little bit actually. Yeah, one year he goes up. Could maybe get him three years at the sweet spot here. Take him to 37. Uh, let's see if he'll do 9 million. And that'll leave us with very little cap space um, to work with here. But let's see what he says. Right, guys. This Marcus Zikov guy interests me. He's 22 years old. 80 overall. Very good puck skills. Um, you know, a solid shot. Very accurate. Um, and pretty pretty decent defensive skills for where he's at. Um, he's only asking 1.7. Uh, see if he comes down. Oh, he does. Oh, man. Let's see if he'll take 1 million for 4 and see what he says there. Alright, guys. So we signed Gunler. That is a good signing for us. Very solid player. Alright, so we get Marcus Zikov to sign. That's a very good ad for us. Again, 22 years old, 80 overall feel like he can develop quite nicely for us and you know big guy good player there okay so just looking at our contract situation now i like our winger our left winger situation honestly uh young guys here look at hickman up to an 84 overall my goodness um texier does want an extension um but then we have myrov and zikov here both 80s uh pretty nice there right wingers here again you know, not too thrilled with Holmstrom here. Got to go out and maybe get a better right winger there. But Gunler, Jacobs, and Kairou uh, looking pretty good. And then again, I do want to get a, a better defenseman to fit on this bottom pairing here. Um, but otherwise, you know, top 4D, absolutely disgusting. And then our goalies here, Andrews. This was an insane signing, guys. He's a medium elite, 25 years old, 82 overall. We lock him in for two seasons at 900k. Um, absolutely insane there. You know, look at the numbers he was putting up. Really, really good stuff. Um, only played in the AHL so far, but very good numbers there. So I'm happy with that signing. And as far as our centers go, we got to go ahead and get a center here. We still have 12.1 million in cap space. Barkov, unfortunately, went and signed with the Anaheim Ducks. And he said he wanted to be on a playoff contender team. So I don't... I don't really understand the logic behind that, but we're going to go out risk it for the biscuit and give a big center offer here in just a minute. 
Alright guys, so Sam Reinhardt is still available. He came down a lot to 4.9 million. Um, let's see if it goes down. He does. We're going to offer him... We're going to keep it at 4.95 for 4. And see what he says to this. Uh, he's an 85 overall at 34. So he's very, very good. Um, and you know what? There is another team interested in him. So I'm going to be a little bit competitive. Yeah, 4.95. Uh, let's and we'll see what he says to that. He would slot very well into our second line. So let's see what happens. So guys, I realize Kale Clegg is only asking for 1.07. He's 32, 81 overall. Um, he does go up a little bit. Um, I feel like we'll just do maybe one year at a million and see what he says. Good defense made would fit into like you know our second or third pairing, and we'll see what he says to this offer. Hey guys, so huge signing here. Ryan Hart did accept our offer. We lock him in for the next four years. Um, again, he might end up retiring before then, but he's an 85 at 34. He's an incredible player. Um, this was a great ad for us going into the next season. Wow, guys, look at this trade offer we just got from Carolina. They want to give us JT Miller in their round five in 2032 in exchange for one of our prospects who's honestly, you know, I'm be fine with giving him up in exchange for our round two in 2032 and a round five. Our goal is to win a Stanley Cup, guys. I honestly like this trade, and we'd be getting a very solid winger. He's 37 and an 83 still. He's a great player. I mean, you know, look at the puck skills, look at the shot. You know, he's still got and he still has very good defensive stats. Um, fits perfectly into our forward line three, which is exactly what we were looking for, and has those superstar abilities. Uh, I'm going to say yes to this, guys. Um, I really like this trade. All right, guys. We did sign Kale Clegg for the next year. That's a great ad for us. He'll fit nicely into our second or third D pairing. And we signed Wyatt Johnson. He's 27. I think he's like an 81 or 82 overall. Um, you know, great player. Got some superstar abilities. Uh, fits nicely into our third line center role. So this was a great ad for us. Alright guys, so we make it into the next season with 2.7 million left in cap space. Um, we do have to sign some AHL players, so that's where that will go. Um, as you can see here, I mean, we're going to send Kershaw back down to the AHL, so that's fine. Um, Thomas probably going back to the AHL as well. Um, he's a good AHL player, you know, 80 overall. Um, and here are centers, McKinnon, Newhook, Reinhardt, and Johnston. Um, I want to take a look at this kid. Yeah, so 27, 81 overall. Very good shot, very good puck skills, fast skater, 89, and good senses here. Um, you know, these are pretty nasty centers, guys. <laughs> and then our left winger situation, very solid. Hickman, Miller, Texier, and Mayorov. We do have Zikov, though. I might send Mayorov down because Zikov's four years younger and the same overall. Um, so winger is looking very good. Um, and then our right wingers, we have Kairu, Jacobs, and Gunler. Do you want to see, you know, we're going to end up bringing someone from the AHL team up. Uh, we do have a couple very nice prospects. Joaquin Brain, I believe, is like a 79 now. And he's like 24 or something. So good prospect. We can definitely give him some ice time in the NHL. He's good enough. Our D pairings here look very, very good. Um, I really like our D here. Got some depth there. Uh, and then our goalies honestly look solid. I like this guy. I like this guy a lot, um, and we'll see how he does. Uh, Blomquist also looking pretty good. Um, both 82s, so could be an area of concern, but overall, they look like solid goalies. So that'll be it for our signings, and we're going to do some work on our AHL team now, guys. Alright guys, so to end the episode here, we're just going to go over our lines. As you can see here, first line looking very solid. We have Hickman up on that first line now. He's very good up to an 84 overall. Second line, very good as well. Reinhardt paired with Newhook and Texier. Um, third line and fourth line have some nice depth to it. JT Miller being a vet there, down there on the third line with Zikov and Gunler. Um, you know, Zikov has a good amount of room to develop, so we want to get him a little more ice time. And then we have Wyatt Johnston paired with Joaquin Brain, who's 22 and 78. And then Magnus Jacobs. Um, again, Brain's got a good amount of room to grow. He's a very good player. 
you know, very good puck skills, good shot, you know, good defensive awareness. Um, he's developing nicely. I think he's ready to come into the NHL and he's ready for that chance. And then looking at our D pairs, very good D pairs again this season. Rutu Makar and then Byron Vasilev on the second pairing. Clegg and Spence rounding it out on the bottom pair with some good chemistry. The reason I put Vasilev on the second pairing, again, is for the chemistry. Um, you know, they have better chemistry with Byram there, and Rutu and Makar are going to kill it up on that front line. Uh, power play is looking nasty this season. Plus five and then plus two on that second unit. Um, four man power play again, plus five and plus one. PK has a plus three and an even correlation. Very good first unit here. Um, they should have a pretty high percentage. And three man PK is looking very solid as well. Um, take a look at our goalies. We'll have Wilson Andrew. He actually went up to an 83. So that's good to see. 26 years old. Got some room to grow for sure. Uh, medium starter potential. Uh, looking good. Lots of good stats here. You know, a handful in the 90s. So we like to see. Uh, and then Blomquist backing him up. Um, you know, also got a couple 90 stats in there. You know, a good amount of high 80s. Um, so he's looking good for us. And overall, I like this team, guys. Um, we are done with that game. <laughs> uh, and I just really want to sim through the preseason here. And, um, you know, see how we do. So we're going to go in four and three in the preseason. Uh, you know, as you know, not our best preseason showing, but I don't know. Every season that we've done super, super well in the preseason, we don't make a deep playoff run. So maybe this is a sign of things to come here. Um, but good production there up and down the lineup. Look at our defenseman. Kale McCarr, only two points. Very interesting. Um, but other guys stepping up, you love to see it. Let's see how our goalies did. Um, so Blanquist, not great numbers, but Andrews, very, very nice to see those numbers there. So again, maybe like, maybe there's some weird superstition where if you do super well in the preseason, you're not going to do too hot. Um, yeah, Hurricanes, one and five, they played very well. Uh, last year and the Canucks going two three and one and they won the Stanley Cup last season. So yeah uh, Maybe there's something to it guys. We'll hope for the best this year and We'll see y'all back here for the 2030 2031 season We are in our final three seasons of this franchise mode series I really appreciate the support on this series all this time guys if you enjoyed this video smash that like button and subscribe to the channel again only three more episodes left of this franchise mode series. I've had a blast. I hope you've enjoyed them too. Have a good one, y'all.